Welcome back everyone. I'm Professor Rhett Smith and today we're talking about lessons 7.1 and 7.2 in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer and these lessons are concerned with ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. Now section 7 of the primer has to do with uh, different types of characterization techniques for organic molecules. And since in section 4 we're talking about all these pi conjugated and aromatic systems, I want to talk about ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy. This is a technique that's used in particular to study pi conjugated systems. Now in this Organic 2 course we're going to talk about how organic molecules interact with ultraviolet, visible, infrared, and radio frequency radiation. So I just want to start off with a quick review of the electromagnetic spectrum. The higher energy end of these wavelengths of light are the ultraviolet and visible wavelengths. And this region spans from about 100 nanometers to about 700 nanometers. So what happens to an organic molecule when it absorbs some ultraviolet or visible radiation? What happens is that the absorption of light, absorption of this energy, leads to what is called an electronic transition. Now we know that electrons are in orbitals on molecules. The orbital in a molecule that is the highest in energy that still has electrons in it it's called the highest occupied molecular orbital. The lowest energy orbital that does not yet have electrons in it is called the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So let's consider a normal organic molecule that just has sigma bonds in it. Well, if you have only sigma bonds and all the electrons are in some type of sigma bonding orbital, and two electrons are in a bond, so this is sort of the notation that may not look very familiar, but we know kind of what it means. If we have the molecule absorb light of the perfect amount of energy to cause one of those electrons to have enough energy to move up to what is called the antibonding orbital. Antibonding because once you pull electrons out of the bond and put it in a different orbital, you are going to be breaking that bond. Then one electron is still in the bond, but you've pushed one electron higher in energy to some other state. Now if the molecule has both sigma and pi bonds, we know that a pi bond is weaker than a sigma bond, so it will of course take less energy to remove an electron from a pi bond than it would from a sigma bond. So when you look at the energy of absorption, the energy of light absorbed that causes a electron to be promoted from a pi to a pi star orbital, it's known as the pi to pi star transition, that will be a lower energy than what we need for the sigma to sigma star transition. We should also recognize that if you have a longer pi conjugated system, then whatever radical or cation or anion you have in that system will be more stabilized by resonance. Similarly, when you take an electron out of a pi system and leave an unpaired electron, that's something like a radical. So the longer that you have over which to delocalize that, the more stable will be. So it will take you less energy to create a more stable, more pi conjugated species. So it will require less energy, which occurs at a higher wavelength, to cause a transition in a more pi conjugated system. So this is how your spectrometer is set up. You have a light source that's capable of emitting light at a certain wavelength at a given time. You know exactly how much light your source is producing. And that light hits your sample. Any light that your sample doesn't absorb continues on through the sample and hits a detector, and that will read out to a computer to let you know how much light at each wavelength your sample has absorbed. So the spectrum you get in a uv -vis spectrum is just a plot of the absorbance versus the wavelength. So if we consider this particular spectrum, we see that there's a maximum absorbance of light at 220 nanometers. Now the amount of light absorbed per mole of sample is called the molar absorptivity or the molar extinction coefficient. It's given the symbol epsilon. And the Beer-Lambert law is a law that relates the absorbance that you see in your spectrum to the path length, that is how wide of a path your light has gone through your sample. Of course the concentration of your sample matters. A really concentrated sample will absorb more light than a not as concentrated sample. And then of course we need to know how much light is absorbed per mole of your material. So the Beer-Lambert law is simply absorbance equals extinction coefficient times path length times the concentration. Now 
in most spectrometers you have a constant path length of one centimeter, so usually the path length is one. So it's easy to monitor concentration over time in a spectrometer. So let's say that we start off with a sample B that has an absorbance of 0.2. If we double the concentration, the absorbance will become 0.4. Also, if we double the path length, the absorbance will become 0.4. This lets scientists follow reactions over time. You could take a UV-Vis spectrum at the start of a reaction and then wait an hour. And if we started at point A and after one hour of reaction we got to point B, we would know that half of the species giving us this particular absorbance was gone after that hour of reaction time. For topic 7.1 and 2, the part about UV-Vis spectroscopy, we saw some pretty complicated sort of diagrams, but if we summarize what we want to learn from all of that, we want to learn that the lowest energy transition upon the absorption of UV-Vis light by a pi conjugate molecule is going to be the pi to pi star transition. So we learned some new vocabulary there. This is an example of a transition from the highest occupied molecular orbital to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. This allows us to study pi conjugated systems and to get an idea about how long the pi conjugated system is because the longer the pi conjugated system, the lower the energy or the higher wavelength we'll see in our spectrum of that pi to pi star transition. Finally, the amount of light absorbed per mole of the molecule, which is called the molar absorptivity or the extinction coefficient, increases as the size of the conjugated segment increases. There's a larger part of the molecule responsible for absorbing light, so of course you're going to absorb more photons of light per mole of material.